bad writing. It's something that you see a lot more of these days. And when I say that, I don't mean the writing is bad in the things that we watch. You see people saying bad writing a lot. And I want your guys' perspective on this too, chat. Burp. It seems to me that it's become way more ubiquitous and common to see that in comment sections or tweets or, or whatever than it was even a year or two years ago. I totally agree with you, but I never realized it until you said it. That is true. First thought, this is drinkers doing. He's a guy that came and started coming up. Uh, I'm actually just gonna type bad writing into YouTube. Okay, well, here's not too surprised by this one. So this is not planned, and of course this is gonna be catered to my algorithm, which is gonna have a lot of chuds. And Perp was correct. That is correct. At least partially. So She-Hulk, a lesson in terrible writing. It was three weeks ago. 3.7 million views. This is unplanned, by the way. We did not like pre no talk about this or anything. That's awesome. Called it. How to write better. Uh well, that doesn't have a whole lot okay, of Okay, that's good. That's good. There he is. Chris Gore, the man. Yeah. Lil Movie Perp says, Is this where the salty fanboys hang out and complain about not being pandered to anymore? Um uh are, are we so. salty fanboys? I don't know. I think uh, there are channels that do that better than that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, also, I don't care. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I I'm not exactly time. sure. Um, yeah. How has writing gotten so bad in the last 20 years? Yeah. All right. It is possible, by the way. And, you know, it's important to understand that you can say something is badly written and it not be like essentially a dog whistle. But I think you guys have probably seen that in a lot of the context, if you've seen the term thrown around, it's aimed at the exact same stuff that is called woke as we look here you know uh, she hulk bad writing terrible writing and that guy wrote ryan jack or jack ryan and then this one just kind of it's four years ago but it's a little on the nose why sjw's are so bad at writing fiction yeah because <clears throat> all we want to do is talk about the issues man every single comic book and movie scene is nothing but us bitching about the issues. Oh, the quartering three days ago. Proof the end is near. I don't know what that's about. Probably just yeah. an advertisement for his coffee. His woke coffee. Oh, look at look at here. Man, you were more right. So a year ago, Shang-Chi. Good ideas. Bad writing. Bad writing. Good ideas, bad writing. Bad writing. And then nuts are here. The rise of Skywalker, but it's just lazy writing. I mean, I don't okay. even know if I disagree with that. <laughs> It's, well, it looks no, like I, it's a meme. Like I don't think that I wouldn't. I don't wouldn't describe the the writing of Rise of Skywalker as lazy necessarily. Just kind of desperate. <laughs> it's a cluster. Like it's. It seems like it. It really does strike me as a bunch of executive mandates. You know, like we need to have this to get people back on our side. We need to do this, and and this it has to have this, and that that's what it seems like to me. A lot of bad writing. I mean, really, the the main one that we saw repeated was. Critical Drinker, and I think Drinker. a couple by uh, Film Courage. So, uh, you want to talk about your experience with bad writing? In what way? I mean, any bad writing you've done, <laughs> or no, any bad writing that you like examples that you've seen, if you can think of generally of of the claim of something being bad writing. Uh, well, on Reddit, I I recently got into it with uh, someone that said She Hulk has bad writing, and it was you know we got into it, and eventually. It turns out they never even saw the show. So that's my experience with bad, like bad writing. It seems like the people that say bad writing, there's just it's just another it's a buzzword now, I guess. All right, so this isn't going to be too much different because it's the live my it's our secondary channel, uh Live AF, which, you know, I don't know why it's called that whenever we stream Live AF on here, but whatever. Whoever came up with this idea is they're a bad writer. But it's basically the same. I mean, the first one to come up is that critical drinker I get it. I get comments all the time. Like whenever we've talked about She-Hulk uh, in particular, that's what stands out recently where we talk about all of the fan crap going on and we talk about what the fandom menace is saying about, you know, and, and then the bigotry around stuff and so on and so forth. And then I'll get inevitably a couple of people commenting saying, well, I just don't like it because it's bad writing. I don't care what a bunch of losers say about me online. Think about what does that tell you? What is, what do you take from that? If you just were 
trying to learn somebody's opinion based on, you know, you're giving benefit of the doubt and you're not just assuming that they're trolls or whatever. What can you discern from that phrase? It's an empty signifier. Press. And then when you press on, they don't even, they haven't even watched the freaking show. I was so annoyed. I was there giving examples of what I liked about She-Hulk. Because a lot of times, if they do talk about bad writing, it's just dialogue. People seem to think like dialogue is all the writing, right? Yeah. Well, and then and then they'll they'll also I've seen like basically they say plot holes sometimes, sure. uh, or what what sure. they perceive yeah. as plot holes. Because a lot of the examples that you see. Uh, of people so it's a plot hole is like you know a guy says he's gonna go do something and then the scene cuts and he's at the place and they're like well we didn't see him go there <laughs> there's something like that you know like clearly people that don't understand what a plot hole is i don't understand it so many legendary iconic beloved movies have what these guys if they applied things consistently would be considered a plot hole shut up shut the f up all right what makes bad writing bad <laughs> Uh, the biggest mistake most writers make is thinking they have nothing left to learn. All right. That's fair. That's, I think that's deep, a mistake. Bro. That's a mistake you can make in a lot of areas in life. But, yeah. Um, bad writing is mainly boring writing. It can be boring because it is too confused or too logical or boring because it is hysterical or lethargic or boring because nothing really happens. If I give you a 400 page manuscript of unpublished novel, uh, something that I can you I consider to be badly written. You may read it to the end, but you will suffer as you do. Uh, it's possible that you've never had to read eighty thousand words of bad writing. Uh, the friend of a friend's novel. I have on numerous occasions. If you ask around, I'm sure there'll be blah blah blah. Trinker's friend. <laughs> yeah, uh, a novel by someone who has spent isolated years writing a book. They're convinced is a great work of literature, and when you're reading it, you'll know it's bad, and you'll know what bad truly is. Uh, bad writers continue to write badly because they have uh, many reasons, in their view, very good reasons for writing in the way they do. They're bad because they cleave to the causes of writing badly. What in God's holy name are you blathering about? This is a lot of kind of badly written. <laughs> this, this is too meta for me, dude. This yeah. is way too meta. Uh, it's almost always a love poem addressed to the self. <laughs> By the self to the self. And that I, I get that. Yeah. So like yeah, yeah. self-indulgent, self-involved writing, it definitely can tends to stand out. You know, like when you when you talk about uh the room is a perfect example. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. I did not. Or or double down. My name is Aaron Brand. I was the first in my class in college in computer science. I joined the military and became a fighter pilot and won many medals for distinguished service. I'm now a covert agent, a mercenary for any nation that wants to control another. I can steal any car, any time. I've been awarded every medal. The Medal of Honor, the Medal for Meritorious Service, Defense Meritorious, Joint Service Achievement, Armed Forces, Purple Heart, Heroic Meritorious Achievement. And I've never been so proud of our troops, but I have no love to live for anymore. I'm sure you've heard of The Room. Everyone Some of you probably heard room, of it. Yeah. But Double Down is another one. What's that guy's name? I always forget. Neil Breen. Neil Breen, yeah. They're both examples, and there's a lot of them. If you ever watch Best of the Worst, they, they come across this a lot, where it's like a middle-aged guy who decides, like, I've never written or made a movie before, but I'm going to do it. And he gets the money together, and he just starts doing it with no experience in any of this stuff. And they write the script, they do the acting, they do the directing. And uh, and you end up with a pretty bad movie, often in entertaining ways, but like The Room. But I mean, it's not well written at all. It's it's entertaining because of how bad it, badly it's written. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the reason it's so badly written is like it's just about him and it's all from his singular perspective. And he was writing about things that, you know, he really felt at the time. And, and that's good to do. But like if you don't step outside of yourself and write other perspectives into your characters, it, it, you know, like a perfect example is in the first scene, you see Johnny in the room, right? When he goes into the flower shop. Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny, I didn't know it was you. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go, keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot, bye. It's basically the line is written to 
lift him up and and praise him and it's like you're just, my favorite customer yeah you're my favorite customer yeah and it's like, like all these all these like movies and they're all like very ego driven so <laughs> like the the uh get get even was is another famous get even. one <laughs> get even where like every like the guy's the funniest guy so when he takes out a girl on a date like the waiter knows who he is yeah he's saying the funniest say that joke again man and it's like every like everyone loves him these you know they're they're usually kind of scummy because they usually like hire like young girls to be like the love interest and they always have like like you know like love scenes with them and it's really cringe it's really like it's hilarious too but it's uh yeah these are terrible 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 movies but they're dope as fuck yeah i mean they're entertaining but just for like not the best reasons um you know and, and this this whole topic by the way does intersect with the idea of objectivity subjectivity in art and filmmaking and and so on uh because bad writing or bad anything when it comes to art may be referring to something that most people will agree is bad but there's always the chance and probably you know based on law of probability there's probably some people that might completely disagree uh you know i mean that's obvious when you talk about the last jedi for example how uh, i fucking love it Thank i you. love it a lot and then you've got all these other people that are clearly very triggered by it up yours woke moralists we'll see who cancels who and they hate it with a passion that comes from different perspectives which i've talked about on the channel before that that's what they really hate is perspectives that are not their own uh which often means non-white or non-cis non-male uh or at least just having those other perspectives in a movie that also has a white male perspective is is too much for them uh but that's it to me that reads as a lack of empathy and unwillingness to you know kind of uh i guess absorb the the experience of of other people when it's depicted or described anyway what were you saying yeah no and last jedi this is a special movie this is a special one because this is the one that got me into this whole thing, got me, you know, open my eyes to what's going on, all that. Um, it's also one that all the time I hear it's objectively bad. Like it's a dude, no, like when I when I would like get into debates or whatever, they would say, no, dude, it's objectively bad. Like you don't understand. You can't like there's nothing good about this movie. Like that word objective, objectively bad always comes up with this with Last Jedi. So I'm glad you brought it back to Last Jedi. Here's the thing. It's clobbering time. To me, it's it's a compulsion to rationalize your preferences, your your opinions, your subjectivity as fact. Because you know, I, I understand that. Like, it's kind of human nature to struggle and feel defensive whenever you love something, or love it, love it, or hate it, or whatever. And then someone comes up with the opposite take on it. Right? It's like it, it kind of rubs us the wrong way. Uh, and it takes basically emotional maturity to be able to accept that, oh, this person has a completely different lived experience than me. Their perspective is is not like mine in a lot of ways. So, you know, I get that they took this from it, but I still fucking didn't like it or whatever. Or it could just be as simple as some people like a, a, a slow paced kind of slow burn movie, right? And then other people or might be like that way too slow takes too long for the plot to kick in. Yeah, it's either, yeah. is either one of them wrong? Not necessarily, you know, like that's literally just two people that have different. And that's the other part that plays into this expectations about what you're, you're going to watch or read or whatever. If you go into something thinking, you know, it's going to be one thing and it's something completely different. Uh, you know, the, the you could, one of two things could happen. It could, rub you the wrong way completely or you could be pleasantly surprised that it did something that subverted your expectations um yeah and bringing it back to the last jedi that happened with that for me because i just expected kind of a it's this is going to basically be the sequel to the force awakens kind of same vibe same general direction of you know let's kind of copy the original trilogy um and it was not that and it, i remember sitting in the theater at midnight watching the last jedi I felt uncomfortable for a minute because I was challenged in a way Based. I was not fucking expecting from a Star Wars movie. Uh, it, it was making me question all of these uh, assumptions and, and ideas I've had about the force and, and what it means, you know, all this stuff that I've like everybody 
it's what the the films had told us up until that point. And and then it started de uh, deviating from that. And uh, some people could handle it. Some people couldn't. And I think that's the distinction. At, well, uh, I want to say that because I know there are people that just don't like the movie for reasons that are like the plot and then like the, the casino scene ruins it for them or something like that. But there are people that just feel so insecure, I think. They can't stand the idea of anyone thinking differently than them. And so they have to call it objective. But as I've said before, how is it objective if we disagree? True. Watch their head explode. I mean, seriously, are, are you saying that people who disagree with what you claim to be an objective take on a movie, are they just, are they insane? Are they below uh, intelligence level that's worth considering? What, what is it? Can you explain to me what's, what about those people? You is, just don't understand good writing. Did they understand good writing? Because what it seems to me when it comes to those types, and you know who we're talking about, these YouTubers who try to use objectivity as, as their framework, it seems to me like they're post hoc rationalizing, you know, they're basically their emotional and, and instinctive reactions to something. Didn't like Last Jedi because maybe did something that they didn't think Star Wars should do. Okay, fine. But then they, in hindsight, then they have to make four, five hour, you know, uh, videos, streams, talk, like basically just figuring out ways to justify this. Who are we looking at? A mauler. I was 2000 subscribers before The Last Jedi came out. This was when he hit a hundred thousand. I think he's got a lot more than that now. This was October I mean, 2018. Damn. You know, they they do at least put some effort into justifying their opinions. Room crashing scene is one of the most fun scenes in the MC. Fuck uh, oh, uh, me, you will clap at anything. The rack is so oh, big. There's so many explosions. But I, of course, will remain skeptical, especially because no, no, you won't. No, no, you no, fucking no. won't. <laughs> You're going to eat this shit up like the good consumer you are, like the good boy you are. You're going to eat this shit up for breakfast and you're going to love it. And you're going to say it's a 10 out of 10 because you clearly don't actually give a shit about its quality. What would she know about the ethics of the situations like this? It's not like she's familiar True. with any of these kinds of situations. It's not like she had to learn about how these can have repercussions in lore, even, or anything. Really bothers mm, me when lore. characters like who work about this shit for a living have no idea how this works. Very bad, not good, Wonder Woman 84 vibes. Good had past. her as a great character. We had that thing, and this film you're clapping at like a fucking retard ruined that. So when you look at a, a Mahler video, which, who has the time? What the fuck? Compared to Jeremy Griggs, where he's not giving any reasoning for anything, except it's woke, it's an agenda, and then, you know, I, I believe that it's, it's... What I've seen of Mahler... What the fuck? ...and EFAP, they go through some effort to eh, create some kind of framework for why they basically agree with Jeremy Griggs. <laughs> yes. I, don't, I only seen one thing, and I didn't like his take on Luke. But I, I get his general takes, and I've uh, for some reason I've run into his subreddit a lot, so I I, I, I sort of it's the same fan base. So it's like uh, I guess you just did that Lord dump on me, so I I get it. Yeah, it's hard to really cover him because his stuff is so long. And like I went early on in my channel, I did a video, um, something about, uh, but it was a response to someone who had responded to about a Mahler video, not responded, but just criticized it. And anytime somebody criticizes a Mahler video or criticizes him on Twitter, uh, there's a bit of a harassment that's pretty much guaranteed to happen. Uh, their fans do not like it. Uh, and they will, and they will show up in your replies or your comment section, basically throwing down the gauntlet for you to justify, uh, you know, and, and then another thing they'll do is if you even mention how long his videos are, they'll say long man bad. <laughs> long, long man bad. And they think that that's like some kind of got you for like, they don't have to address anything else that you said, it, but it, because you mentioned how long his videos are. So long that's man it. bad. It's over. And which is the exact, I mean, it's literally the same meme as like the Trump thing, the orange man bad. Yeah. Uh, where it's reductive, it's a thought terminating cliche. It doesn't tell you anything, and it's literally just uh, sounds like a, a, a dude bro thinking he's being clever. 
Oh my God, his his intro video on his on his page, like his trailer, is two two hours and forty two minutes. Damn, uh, well, that's an intro. Look, Jeez. that's almost a six hour video on Multiverse hey, of Madness. He put in the work. Yeah, I don't know that I'd call it work. I'd call it more like, you know, I guess persistence of sitting in one place and talking. Um, yeah. But, but I don't know. You know, I, I mentioned how long yeah. it is. Long man, bad. Long man, bad. <laughs> you guys, be, be gentle with her. I'll be right back. Do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hello there. So you guys all know this whole Luke controversy of Luke, of how he was, the character assassinated, disrespect to the character, blah, 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 blah. Now, I come from the school that when I saw the Force Awakens trailer and they weren't showing Luke, and like and more and more it seemed like uh, what's going on with Luke I actually assumed I actually assumed that Luke was going to be the big villain of this new series and I thought I thought that was fantastic honestly I was like going off like oh my god this is, makes perfect sense you know and there's like theories out there there's like theories that it would make sense because this dude if you we look at the original trilogy which we all love if you look at the original trilogy that guy's Jedi training was straight up garbage compared to what a Jedi should have done. Okay, like wasn't little Anakin too old as it is, as is in to be training as a Jedi. And now we have Yoda like not clearly, you know, he's getting older, he's not all there and now he's training like Luke and he's like ah it's like it's very clear that Luke did not have the best training. Like he left halfway, they said it. And then in, in, when in Return of the Jedi, he returns, Yoda's already dying. He's like, oh, you're good, don't worry. Dude, if Anakin went bad. Your mother. Dude, this should have gone like nuclear compared to what Anakin went through. And we could have had the next Darth Vader is actually Luke Skywalker. Ryan, uh, who's the guy, what's the name of the director of Last Jedi? Ryan Johnson, I think. Ryan Johnson, whatever. That guy, he didn't go all the way. So it's like, the fact that he's even questioning it is like, makes sense. Dude, yeah, and Dane brought this up. Dane brought this up. He goes, hey, in Return of the Jedi, he has like the, the hood. He's using his powers like slick. Like he's like, he's very slick as a Jedi. Like he had, he put it all together. I was like, dude, dude was that dude was using dark side shit, wasn't he? He had to have been, he was too slick. The way he was working, the way he set everything up. That was Dane, Dane, Dane brought that up. I mean, like, hey, you're the you're the one that got me thinking about it. Don't don't give me all the credit, because like, yeah, like based on context of in the original trilogy, I think I think that Luke got closer to the dark side than we initially than we probably assumed. Yep. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, there's the obvious moment where he's you know really close to killing him and. And he's impulsive at a couple of points and so on. But I think that he was probably dipping into that that dark side magic a little bit more. I shouldn't call it magic. I know better. But a little bit more than, than is apparent. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, Ryan Johnson, I think he had a good take for the character. In my opinion, he didn't go all the way. They point at Luke and say that this is why it's bad writing because of the yeah. original trilogy. But that's technically not even true. Like, it's just a different take. It's just like something different. Yeah, different perspective. That's all it is. It's not bad writing. Nope, it's not bad writing. It's it's once again, it's, yeah, like you said, it bridges all together. And I'm glad that you are uh, the co-host of this because I would probably have missed all of the interconnectedness of this episode. It's all themed. It's all connected, man. You know, Alex there, Jones. Man. Here's the thing. You gotta be fucking kidding me. It literally is all part of the same anti-fan organism. Yeah, it's yeah. about it's about either rejecting something because it's it's against your uh, what you believe or against tradition, basically. You know, uh, the tradition of of mostly white people, you know, and and men in movies or shows or whatever that's being challenged, and and which is a good thing, but certain people don't like it. But it's also tied in with this idea that it's objective that. It, you can look at how the fandom menace talks about stuff and they think that they're being objective, you know, uh, I'll get comments sometimes, even some of my own audience, not to throw you in with the fandom menace, whenever we covered the she Hulk twerking thing. And I had a couple of comments like, okay, but you have to admit it was pretty cringe. And I was like, no, I don't. Why do I like, why do I have to admit that? Because I don't agree with it. It was, 
not as funny as they probably wanted me to think. Taste it there. Num, 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 eat it up. Go. Okay, three, two, one. You know I'm the hottest. You ain't. Never gotta heat me up. I'm... You know I'm the hottest. You ain't never. Never gotta heat me up. but i'm also a fucking you know old ass dude that whatever but it was amusing it was just it's not like it was the core of the episode or or whatever you know so i i can just tell it's easy for a lot of people, even not the fandom menace, to think of the, their perspective and views as objective. Objectively is the new literally. Right? Like, oh, uh, true. you true. know how people would say literally, and then it would be something completely figurative or metaphorical um, or, or <laughs> yeah. hyperbole? Well, right. it, this is that. Ob yeah. It's objectively bad. And it's like, no, you mean that your opinion is that it's bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Objectively is literally the new literally, literally and subjective. That's okay. objectively true. Literally. But it's not objectively true because I just, <laughs> just something I said. You might agree with me, but <laughs> no, sorry. Yeah. I'm holding my ground on this. Anyway, so these guys actually seem to have some measure of rationalization for, for what they mean by this stuff. Whereas, you know, the fandom menace, we cover them a lot. It's just, I mean, M she you is literally one of their fucking catchphrases and people like clap like seals like oh yes and she knew <laughs> bad writing is a lot of it bad writing <laughs> Mahler's subreddit this post uh two months ago caught my attention and i, I got kind of fascinated with it you can ask perp I, I sent it to him i was like dude this is just <laughs> i'm like obsessed with this thread right now <laughs> so this is uh from a Mahler fan and he wanted to have a discussion on wokeness uh, I doubt this will be well received here, but I wanted to ask this anyway. Before, I thought I was on the same wavelength as everyone else, but now I'm not sure. And I wanted to discuss this for the sake of clarification. Simply put, what is wokeness? When is a movie or TV show spreading, to quote Critical Drinker, the message? Is it simply when the show has non-white LGBT characters, or do those characters have to do something for it to be woke? Secondly, why is something being woke an issue? I'm assuming that none of us here are any kind of ists or phobes. Kind of reminds me, or does remind me of T-Rev, right? Where he was under the notion that you have to be aware if you are a ist or a phobe. Like you that it's a conscious thing. Previously on X-Men. What is an ism? An ism is a conscious belief, a philosophy, a doctrine, an idea. It's something that you consciously believe in your mind with intent or, or a practice, like a, something that you consciously believe. That's what an ism is. There's no such thing as accidental racism. Okay. Uh, all right. Definition of ism. You wanted to get into this. I'm sorry that you, you steered me down this road. Uh, distinctive, distinctive doctrine, cause, or theory. That's one. Theory. Entry, yep. entry two. An oppressive and especially discriminatory attitude or belief. Attitude. An belief. attitude. attitude. An belief. attitude is not necessarily a mindful, aware thing. And you can, you can, you know, quibble with me on that all you want to, because I know that if you admit that I'm right, that might mean that you have to question yourself a little bit. And I know that that's going to be hard for you. Eb, I really wish you would. I really hope that you leave this debate and you think maybe he I, had a point that maybe so, I do have some unchecked biases. That like you can't it is. say it, you can't racism. Say it, you can't have the ism. On. The racism is an effect that something has. I don't have to have hate in my heart to uh, not value uh, the, the views and perspective and experiences of a person of color because I don't understand it because that's not my lived experience. So I don't relate to it. It's like, so it doesn't, eh, it doesn't mean much to me, right? 
That doesn't mean that I'm hateful. It's more apathy. But that is still racism. And I was surprised by that. And I think that that might be one of the one of the barriers between some of these people that, you know, that are you know, saying hateful shit, but maybe not like maliciously ah, I'm trying to think how to phrase this. Obviously I can't know everybody's fucking hearts or their, their true intentions, but I feel like there's a degree, especially in the audience, not the YouTubers as much, but at the audience who just don't see themselves that way. And so they get mad when they're called racists or whatever, because they're, they may be saying racist uh, rhetoric, things that, that we know to be uh, identical in some cases to racist or homophobic or whatever rhetoric or terms, but they just don't feel hate for, hateful. They don't feel like they hate people of color or whatever. So they don't see themselves as an ist or a phobe. And that's what t Red said was like, uh, well, you, you, if you're a something ist, what does ism mean? I think he said. And it's like something that you choose to be. And I was like, no, no, no. Anyway, so that, that kind of stands out to me. No, that's true. Yeah. Is it because audiences would definitely not like such things? Get woke, go broke. I disagree with this idea because many works make money and are critically acclaimed, even though it has woke elements. And all of the bad woke movies also had bad writing. <laughs> I didn't even do that on purpose. I didn't. Do Dude, bad writing. Damn. Uh, I asked this because I saw a light year and turning red being called woke. <laughs> From my perspective, they're not. Lightyear just had a gay kiss that only lasted for a few seconds, and Turning Red just had Chinese Canadian characters. That huh? few seconds was bad writing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and it also it threw off. It made the rest of the movie objectively it's bad just, too. It's that the little thing, that whole thing. Bad writing, man. Why would the writers do that? Oh my god, they ruined uh, it. <laughs> naturally, they would explore some aspects of Chinese culture as well. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to know this sub's thoughts. Can I be honest? It reads like a plant. Like honestly, uh, as I was reading it this time, it does. It does kind of feel like that. But at the same time, even if it is a plant, it provides. Yeah, yeah, us, yeah. I agree. I agree. It provides us with an interesting. Uh, the the responses are really what's interesting. It's now, a finely tuned where they have to. Where like he's so specific with all these things with the questions where it's like, of course they were going to implode in the thread. Well, yeah, that's true. It may be. It may be so, a plant. Well, so yeah, let's just psychological Dis genius <laughs> disclaim that it, it could very well be a plant and now I, I grant that it but also if it's not yeah, uh this is true, literally true. we're witnessing someone have a fucking like a, a kind of a existential crisis about how he the probably the community he's in but it's you know i don't know it's probably 50 50 if not more in favor of being a plant but let's look at the replies because that's interesting uh, it's more the we are putting down X character for Y character to shine mentality. That's an interesting. Let's let's talk about that for a second. Go, go. A recent example I, I can think of is She-Hulk, uh, where people were saying that they were using, basically using Bruce uh, as you know kind of the punching bag to make her look good, or something like that. Did you, did you see any of that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah. paraphrasing there, but like the idea was that essentially they well, they couldn't stand that she was like not saying no, Bruce. I deal with I deal with it every day, yeah. holding in her anger. They couldn't stand that. They said talking down to him. I saw a comment that was like, "Oh, well, it's just I think he's this is what spawned it was him saying bad writing." And then he goes, "Well, you know, for one thing, it's bad writing. For another thing, her trauma isn't as bad as Bruce's is." And I was like, "When did they say it is?" Yeah. And when and another thing, uh, there's. I can pick this apart all day. You want to talk about trauma, motherfucker? Because yeah. <laughs> go, Dane, go, go, go. But hit hit the like no, chat. Nobody's trauma is worse than anybody else. Like you, there's no metric to gauge that. There's no criteria. There's no uh, unit of measurement to gauge trauma. There might be some things that seem obviously more traumatic than other things for sure. But then also the variables of who a, a, an individual is and 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 you know, what a stage they were at in their life. It, it could be, there's so many variables that to try to quantify trauma uh, and weigh it against someone else's trauma is completely asinine and uh, fucking stupid. It's really stupid. And it misunderstands the complex nature of trauma and how it can take a toll. And, and the same person, like one person might be assaulted or something just like beaten up randomly. And, it causes them a lot of trauma where they're like scared to go out. Another person get 
beaten up and then they're just like, yeah, that was fucking stupid. And, and maybe they heal and they, you know, it's pretty inconvenient or something like that. It's, there's no way to measure this shit. Um, and so that just stuck out to me. They make other people incompetent or stupid just to show off how amazing this character of whatever demographic is, usually in comparison to a previous character. <sighs> is this saying anything? Like, please tell me if I'm wrong, but this doesn't seem like it's saying anything. Yeah, it's trying to say so. Yeah, it's it. Well, what it's doing is it's 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 saying that whatever. Uh, yeah, making one character look bad, like I guess. Or in, yeah, they make other people incompetent or stupid just to show off how amazing this character, whatever demographic is. Wait, so it's only it's only woke if it's done in the context of like here's a a, a female character and they're making this male look silly to make her look good. Uh, yeah. But if it's two white dudes, then it's not woke if they use one to make the other look yeah. silly. Like, isn't this what they did with like Iron Man two? For my time, they've seen each other. Oh, God, hey, it's so awful. Awesome. <laughs> First time you've seen each other since the, the Senate. Uh, since he got his contract revoked. No, the truth is, um, I'm gonna put that away. I'm actually hoping to present something at your expo. Well, if you invent something that works, I'll make sure I get you a slot. Hammer needs a slot, Christine. We kid. <laughs> We kid, we're kidders. Stupid. Yeah, it's stupid. It's they're putting that standard in, in now, of like, hey, look what's happening. This is in this is in so many movies do this. So many movies that I've seen do this, where the guy, main character, happens. This is a white guy. He's fine. It's the status quo. Characters around him kind of have to act a, a little dumber to get away with uh, whatever action scene they need to freaking get to. Like, come on. <laughs> like, I wish they'd provided examples. That's exactly what I was thinking because this is just so general that like this person probably is assuming that the post the original post is sincere and is answering that way but you're also not giving a specific example and and i think that the reason for that is because just like with the she hulk thing it would not be what they say it is and here's the fucking thing it's clobbering time in most examples when i see someone calling something a plot hole or, uh, you know, something like this where they're like, oh, they're doing this for it's like it's because you're stupid and you're not understanding what you're seeing or you're you're seeing it with a very fucking narrow scope, narrow lens of, of analysis. He gets a little more specific on the demographics he's talking about, prioritizing the people of whatever demographic for a role rather than acting ability. OK, so there's where we get into some really subjective shit. They're assuming it's assuming the intention. And in most cases, I think it's clear that there's no obvious intention that they can cite where it's like if a, a person of color is cast and then they say oh they're just doing that to force it or or they're prioritizing demographic over over acting like where are you where are you getting this information from in most cases there is none and then acting ability that's pretty subjective too i mean yeah there's uh, acting that most people generally agree on you know being acting but that's also culturally enforced um you know acting has evolved over time if, if acting was an objective thing it would yeah. just be the same all the time like it would we i don't know yeah i mean <clears throat> i think you know there is waves of like you know when like a bad movie let's say an example uh, like movie like cats came out and then like the jokes you know about how bad some of the acting is like there's a general sense of that um, or general, um, I guess, sort of already comment on on that, like in, from the, the from the communities and all that it becomes memes and it becomes all that, and like it seems like with the problems with like let's say Re uh, Reva in the new Obi Wan show, um, like it's all manufactured through th this this type of chud mentality where it doesn't feel like legit of like this is bad acting guys like it's all like done it feels so manufactured and, and fake when they try to uh, sort of meme bad acting. It, it's almost like they're, they're more terrified of it yeah. rather than making fun of it. Like it's, it's bizarre. Well, it's, it, it strikes me as, you know, like I said, post hoc rationalization, but really just like they started a conclusion and then they build out their framework for defending that conclusion. Yeah. You know, like so much of filmmaking, let's just stay on film, even though art broadly kind of applies this stuff but let's stay on movies 
so much of it is not logical in the sense of how we receive it, right? I mean, you're, yep. you, you work on films, you know, uh, it's, it's about, you can take something completely irrational and if you frame it the right way, you write it the right way, you know, you, you know, have the, some good actor, it, like all those elements come together and yeah. it, you don't even notice that on paper, this idea is absurd. I mean, look at Guardians of the Galaxy with a talking tree and a raccoon and, and so much in comic books broadly is like that. Um, but the execution is what matters. So if you're watching a movie and let's say, you know, a, a black character comes on, what feeling, what, what impulse do you get that makes you think that this person was cast because of their Democrat, because of their black rather than their acting? Like what, yeah. what? what information are you absorbing that tells you that and how do you come to such a specific uh, analysis of that yeah I and know. i also i also want to know what you think when you see a white guy acting bad like <laughs> why they got yeah cast. well and i mean you know i i don't want to harp on it but yeah obviously there's bad actors and stuff but like perfect example of how subjective it can be is nick cage uh, yeah there's a whole episode of community where abed it takes a class that's about trying to decide if Nick Cage is a good or bad actor. Okay, thoughts on Nicolas Cage? He kind of goes insane because he's like watching all the Nick Cage movies in a short amount of time and he like can't decide. Nicolas Cage, good or bad? A challenge, certainly, but not insolvable because all actors have distinct values, which I use to find answers. Abed, how much Nicolas Cage did you get? Enough! I watched enough to find the answers for Nicholas freaking Cage! Oh! 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 I'm a cat. I'm a sexy cat. Oh! 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 Because he makes these weird choices. There's obviously like a more appropriate acting style for certain types of story. I wish they'd been more specific. That's really all I keep thinking. Um, yeah, but it would be nice. Yeah. I think he kind of gives himself away here. He says, uh, whatever demographic for a role rather than acting, the focus being on, hey, we have this gay black woman in this role. Yeah, Look I, need an example this. I need an example. Look at how progressive and inclusive we are. <laughs> when the show or film itself isn't well written, in other words, when it's bad writing, nor cared about beyond... Okay, so there's another one that I just remembered this is a thing they don't care about it they don't care about the material they don't care about you know how do you know that i mean you put, can because they put the the black actor in there I guess. oh right 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 beyond putting a, they don't care about it beyond putting out a theme or message citation needed like that may be what you feel about it for example the avengers endgame scene where all the women line up and they're like we got this Yep. I think most people, I do, maybe you don't, I don't want to speak for you. I think that is pretty forced and, and just based on the logic of the movie doesn't make any sense because why would all of these women suddenly just decide to do a woman thing or, or are they just all randomly happen to coincidentally be in the same spot to do that? Right. Cause it's cool as fuck. That's I mean, why. I'm not like saying that the movie is bad because of it and I'm not calling yeah. it like woke, but I mean, that does, it does strike me as a little bit of pandering on Marvel's part. Maybe they were, you know, or, or whatever, like maybe they're saying, yes, this is the end of what we've done so far, but you know, look forward to being more women represented going forward. And I have no problem. I actually am all for the uh, female representation in phase four and so on. But just that one moment stands out to me. And I think a lot of people that aren't, anti-woke people is like all right that's you know kind of and they even they even parodied it on the boys girls get it done and the girls get it done girls get it done but then there was that moment after they kicked the nazis ass and he's like damn girls really do get it done yeah <laughs> true but yeah so that's the kind of thing where like it is possible to pander and and it is possible for a lot of people who aren't even like against whatever wokeness means to think that something feels a little pandery, but that still doesn't make it objective. And you got to think to a little girl who's was watching that movie and had just gotten into the Marvel movies or something and saw that that might be the best fucking moment she's ever seen. Yes. Yes. 
Right. That's how I see. I see the whole thing is pandering. That whole last scene when they're handing it off there, that's pandering to Marvel fans. And I saw it's the same thing to me. I thought it was cool. Yeah. I understand there was a backlash towards it. And yeah, I guess. Yeah, they wanted a scene. The, what's the what they, they wanted this to happen? Yeah, they wanted a, a shot with all the women together, all the kick ass women together. All the kick-ass women helping Spider-Man. That was all. That was fucking. Like, what is this? I'm saying this, and it's like awesome. And you guys are bitching about it. Like, can't even get through this thing without just it falls apart under questions. And I'm not just doing these questions performatively. These are the same things that I think when I read it originally and got fascinated with it. Is like, and this is just one response um, beyond what it serves for their message behind the show or film. That is for what they'll for that they'll use everything they can. Please be specific once. Uh, the lack of care for the craft of storytelling and more care given to how diversity looks on a spreadsheet. Like, what? Do they really? It starts to become cartoonish where it's like, do you really think they've just got a spreadsheet and checking literal boxes? You know, because that's Maybe. one you see a lot is they're checking boxes. Yeah. Woke is such a nebulous and ill-defined term. Well, okay. Well, we're on we're on the same page there. Uh, that this is the best I can describe it. Oh, okay. And it's just like, I did a video on it last year. Previously on X-Men. Woke is somewhat complicated. It's something you have to feel in essence. Kind of like when a music group makes you feel something and then they sell out their music and you don't feel it anymore. You can't exactly explain why. Same thing that happens to a movie franchise, but the reason is its integrity. Passion, story writing, has been sacrificed for identity politics. The people you criticize are basically just pointing that out. If you never felt something for the franchise, you might not be able to sense the wokeness. Woke is somewhat complicated. That doesn't tell us anything. That's just a uh, more obfuscation. I don't know about you watching, but I I'm not like one of those spiritual woo-woo people who just, you know, operates my life based on like vague feelings of... Like, oh, uh, this is just the moon's over Sagittarius or whatever. But that's what this sounds like to me. It sounds like someone who is living his life based off of entirely subjective feelings. And this goes back to what I was just saying about thought terminating cliches in that you can apply your own subjective ideas and definitions to these terms. A guy gave, you know, commented in a video I'd done asking, like, what does woke even mean? Can someone define it? And this guy, he's a YouTuber, e-hacker, I think commented and said it, it was just a, a paragraph of him basically saying you can't define it. it's just feeling it's just a thing you feel you notice it when you know it when you see it well, like pornography the, yeah <laughs> guys get it together over there the right wing area <laughs> like this happened before <laughs> yeah. The example he used was uh, like, well, it's like a band that you like. Kind of like when a music group makes you feel something and then they sell out their music and you don't feel it anymore. Notice how many times this guy has already used the word feel. I don't know about you, but I like to operate from, you know, uh, more tangible definitions of terms. You know, that's one thing you'll notice about my content. I very rarely try to slip into you know, entirely subjective emotion based arguments. I try to, you know, keep it uh, practical. I try to keep it logical. I try to lay out in a way that pretty much anyone, if they're being r rational and, and honest, can understand, even if they don't agree with it. And you like, you just know they've sold out. And it's like, well, that doesn't mean anything either. Like, selling out is not a term that you can define. That's like, I've seen all kinds of bands uh, accused of selling out. This doesn't tell you anything except that this guy e-hacker has his very specific feelings for what woke means he's give me some fucking criteria some something to base this on and then we can actually have a conversation but until then you're just throwing out buzzwords anyway so at least he admits it's nebulous and that he can't describe it so that's good uh, it's a word that doesn't mean anything to me personally but this above is what i've come to assume <laughs> okay actually this fucking comment is brilliant because it says everything it says that woke is a thought terminating cliche that whoever the, the, is hearing it is putting all, they're filling it with all of their own fucking subjective ideas of what they think it is. And yeah, there's probably a lot of overlap with what, you know, that means to different yeah. people, but there's also not in some cases, because I've seen people say it about fucking climate change being mentioned in, in media or in film or whatever, like, Oh, it's got, they mentioned climate change as if it's a real thing. That's woke. I saw people talking about fucking COVID 
uh, vaccines and shit is woke too. Like, is the, is the new moon? Is that Roland Emmerich Moon movie? Is that woke? That's environment that counts. Moon, yep. Moonfall. I mean, that's is that yeah. Woke? Is that woke? They is called Mortal Kombat woke, right? Yeah. Damn. I don't know why suddenly you're like being a dildo about Mahler in my chat. I, I don't know how you've watched me as long as you have and not realized that I pretty much reject a lot of the founding principles that Mahler bases his stuff on. But earlier I saw you talking about, oh, don't just talk about it being too long. His video is too long. I'm telling you, they're too fucking long. And I don't have to sit through them to tell you they're too long. Uh, I don't have to sit through them to tell you that uh, I, I doubt that he says anything that's going to make me change the way that I experience film because the premise of being able to judge a film objectively, I reject outright. That's it. So, I mean, you know, calm down and chat. I, want, I don't want you guys, I'd rather you being engaging with what we're talking about and not just fixated on defending your fucking favorite YouTuber. It's, it's not a stand culture around here. I don't want anybody standing me. Woke is putting diversity of the cast above anything else. I don't know. And that, that. that's like, what I'm saying. Like, show me where you are weighing this. And, and it really just goes to show that it's the, the idea of diversity me being something inherently negative and not the default. They think the default is the way things have always been when really media is adapting to represent reality more based on sheer numbers. There should be more female superheroes than males because there's just more females than males in the population, you know, things like that. And, and even if it wasn't, I don't understand how simply having a black person or Hispanic person or gay person or whatever, how that negatively affects yeah. the story in some way. It doesn't, I don't know. I don't understand it. Why is that screaming? It feels like they, they feel like they're being screamed at. Why does that scream at you? You know, where it's like above anything, like it's just, it's so bizarre. Okay, so let's break down that claim. You got two things they claim to be at odds. Prepare for battle. You've got diversity. So the idea that there's different types of perspectives uh, represented by different types of people, with different types of experiences. You've got everything else, which is very, very vague and encompasses anything that might exist in a movie. Yeah. I'm all, I'm all worked up now. <laughs> this Chris, threat, I'm telling you, man, that, that original poster, he worked this up too. The original yeah. guy. Good psychological warfare. Right True. There. Well, I mean, you know, at least if it is a plant, then he's doing Lord's work, honestly, because <laughs> yeah. then what happens next is you, you see these people disagreeing with each other. These are all like fans of Mahler and people who alleged probably seems like are also anti-woke, but then you see them disagreeing and quibbling about what that means. Combine that with uh, the idea that, you know, you know it when you see it, right? It's such a good defense that I made a video on it and it still was a bad defense. And I picked it apart because it's a thought terminating cliche. The speaker says it and has may have specific things in mind, but that does not translate 100% to what the person hearing it thinks, you know, and that's what thought terminating cliches do. Uh, it, it's a really easy, lazy way to just say you don't like, you know, <laughs> you know, you don't Simply like the message, message. which is just a, a rebranded woke, right? Yeah. Like that's all that is, is a different one. In <laughs> she, you, they, that's the yeah. thing. They all have their own specific little tweak on it. Yeah. You know, uh, in she, you, the message, woke politics. It's all the same shit. Simply put to woke equals prioritizing diversity including race, gender, sexual preference, identity <laughs> over quality of the project product. Okay. So there's quality, which, you know, is not an objective thing, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, including TV, books, product, marketing, movies, etc. But this is where it gets cool. <laughs> it's funny. I consider arcane and the boys is woke and they are freaking amazing. So woke is not bad, not yeah. inherently bad. Okay. So therefore using it as a criticism means nothing. Yeah, it's just a thing. It, that's a it's a thing now in movies, and some could be good, some could be bad. Hey, I'm cool with that. Are you cool with that, Dane? Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. good with it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like with anything, because like I just admitted, I I don't think it ruined the movie. I don't even think it ruined the scene, but yeah. it breaks. It broke my immersion in Endgame with just based on logic, movie logic, even because it's like okay. there's this tense, chaotic battlefield with like what hundreds of people or something you know, of all types and genders and stuff. And then suddenly right as Spider-Man is like, ah, or whatever. Yeah. They're trying to get the thing across the battlefield. And it's like, oh, look, 
all of these women in the same place at the same time. That's convenient. <laughs> and, I, you know, and the only thing it did was break my immersion for a moment. That's really my baseline for whether I love something or enjoy it a lot is how immersed do I get. That's just just a baseline. There's a lot of other factors. Just to get a base. Just to get a base. But <laughs> when I'm in the in the moment of the big battle scene and I'm like, oh, it's so great. It's everything I've ever wanted. And then it, that happens like, wait a second. How did that? How did they all get there at the same time? It has nothing to do with them being women, except for the, the context of the. OK, now I sound like a chud. I'm sorry. I'm going <laughs> to and kill my channel well, now at least you're second tier at least you made it to the mauler class the red. True, true. You're, you're red dot <laughs> all right i apologize for all the shit i talked i'm i'm going full mauler look for my seven hour review of uh lord of the rings episode four tomorrow it broke your immersion <laughs> hey but and also that argument yeah it's disrespectful because you're just giving them scraps like a scene but then these same people will complain if all those women get their own movie of course so it's just throwing everything you got at it, you know? And there's always legit criticism with everything that gets gets caught, caught in the crossfire. McLeod, that's actually really, really good point. Casting someone for their race instead of their how good they are, it's the exact same rhetoric that bigots would say about uh, affirmative action. The, it was, the idea was equity, that like instead of just hiring white men by default or whatever, companies were incentivized and encouraged to hire more diverse employees, you know, but like the, the rhetoric around that became like, have you ever seen American history X? Yeah. I think it's like this, it's like this book about this black guy, you know, it's, it's, we're doing this whole black literature, you know, what is it? Black history month? Nothing. It's just, you know, it's everywhere I look now. Their, their dad, the kid, the dude's dad who dies and you get, you see the flashbacks of him ranting about this, this affirmative black chin, all this stuff about making everything equal. It's not that simple. You know, what happened to the other books in the course? They're not any good anymore because Mr. Two PhD says they are. I mean, you got to trade in great books for black books. You got to question these things. You know, yeah. we're talking about books here, but I'm also talking about my job. And he's, he's a firefighter and yeah. like, I got two black guys on my squad now who got their job over a couple of white guys. Yeah, sure. Everything's equal now, but I got two guys. You only got the job because they were black, not because they were the best. No, America's about best man for the job. You do your best, you get the job. You know, this affirmative action crap. Hidden agenda or something going on. Hidden agenda or something going on. Hidden agenda. Hidden agenda. The message. All this stuff about making everything equal, it's not that simple. Woke politics! I mean, you gotta trade in great books for- The message! Does that make sense? Can't have that! No, it's white man bad! Minority beating you up? Oh, that's good! Hidden agenda or something going on. Get the <laughs> message! It's woke! And here's the fucking thing. It's clobbering time. If there's all these variables that can completely alter the term. I'm not calling everyone who's a Mahler fan a bigot or anything. I just think that a lot of them have not, you know, really analyzed this in the way that at least the plant is doing here. and, and really just kind of looked at the consistency factor and seen that there's very little. Uh, and then whenever the only consistency with across definitions of woke that exists is gay people, black people, like it just has to do with their identity. I, I, I would suggest doing some introspection and asking why that is. And and also how you can judge the, the weight put on the identity of someone versus everything else in the movie. <laughs>